Greetings my fellow electric monkey brains. This video will be a brief introduction on how to drive MOSFETs and IGBTs. However, for simplicity I'll only be referring to MOSFETs, but whatever I'll cover here also applies to IGBTs. Most MOSFETs and IGBTs turn on when their gate is raised up to about 5 to 20 volts above their source or emitter. If this voltage is too high, it can damage the switch, and if it's too low, the switch won't turn on properly, so please check the data sheet for your particular chosen switch. Here, for example, I show a MOSFET which we want to use to pull current through some type of load. When a pulse is applied to the gate, the MOSFET drain voltage will go low and then high again after the gate pulse goes off. Now, this is only the ideal case. In reality, the switch takes a finite time to turn on and off, so the diagram would look something more like this, where both the voltage and current take time to ramp up and down. During the time when there are both current and voltage in the switch is when it dissipates a relatively large amount of power. When the switch is fully on in this region, the loss in the switch is usually fixed, so there's not much we can do about it there. However, during the switching transition periods, the losses can be reduced simply by making those transitions as fast as possible. If you're designing a circuit where you have very few switching transitions, then this doesn't matter much. For example, using a MOSFET to pull current through a low voltage light bulb, a switch allows current to flow into the MOSFET base, turning it on, which pulls current through a light bulb. While the light bulb is on, the MOSFET is fully on, there's no switching, so the MOSFET losses are at a minimum. If, however, you want to be able to dim or control the intensity of this light in this circuit, then you would need pulse width modulated signal to be applied to the MOSFET gate. Then you would have rapid switching and you would need to pay attention to the losses in the switch. The reason that MOSFETs and IGBTs can sometimes switch on slowly is because they have an internal capacitance at their gate, which means it takes longer for the gate to reach the necessary switch on voltage, unless of course we can supply the gate with large currents very quickly. This is a typical curve of the voltage on a capacitor when we charge it up. If we increase the current, we can make it charge faster. The same is true for the gate capacitance of MOSFETs and IGBTs. So to turn on the MOSFET quickly, we need a driver circuit which can supply large currents quickly. Now you can build and design your own MOSFET gate drivers. However, it's quite cheap these days to simply buy a dedicated driver IC chip. These driver ICs accept some logic level signal at the input and they output high peak current pulse which charges the MOSFET gate capacitance quickly. Some of the driver ICs I've used in the past are, for example, the MIC4426, which is a dual driver with three amps of peak current, or the UCC3732, which has nine amps of peak current, or the IXDD414, which has 14 amps of peak current. Be careful when ordering these IC chips because some of them have inverting and non-inverting versions, so make sure you order the correct one. The peak current of the driver should be chosen based on the gate capacitance of the switch you're trying to drive. We can estimate this by going to the MOSFET datasheet and finding a value called the total gate charge QG which for the MOSFET IRF3710, for example, is uh, 130 nanocoulombs. Then we divide this value by how long we want our switching transition to be, so 50 nanoseconds, for example, then that will give us a current which we need, which in this case is 2.6 amps. But this is only an estimation, and in reality, we may need something more powerful so that we can have a margin of error to work with. Most drivers state in their data sheet which input signal logic levels they will accept. So make sure that it is compatible with your signal generation circuitry. Now the voltage on the power supply for the IC driver chip itself is important because it is the voltage which will be applied to the MOSFET gate. So be careful because uh, most switches will become damaged if you apply over 20 volts to the gate. The driver IC will also require its own little source capacitor, of course, so that it can supply large currents to the gate of the switch, and that capacitor should be placed near to the driver on the board. It's good practice to put a resistor in between the driver and the MOSFET, and this is called a gate drive resistor. Its purpose is to dampen unwanted oscillations in this loop here. If there are oscillations in this loop, it can cause a lot of EMI, which is electromagnetic interference. Or even worse, it can cause the switch to oscillate on and off rapidly, causing large currents to flow. 
the bigger this gate resistor is, the more it will dampen unwanted oscillations in this loop, which is good. However, a large resistance will also slow down the switch on time. So this is a trade-off which uh, you should be aware of. If the gate resistor is too large, then the gate voltage may look something like this. If it's too small, it may look something like this. And in that case, you should try different gate resistances until you get something more like this. If you're in doubt about what value of resistor to start with, just choose something large and then work your way down. Note that keeping this loop here physically small on the board will also help to dampen the unwanted oscillations, which in practice means that the switch and the driver should be near to each other on the board. Usually a diode is placed in parallel to the resistor to help the switch turn off faster. In addition, a Zener diode here can protect the gate from over voltage spikes or reverse voltage spikes. And lastly, a pull down resistor can help to turn the switch off if something goes wrong with the driver. Now all of this works fine, but there arises a problem when we want to drive a high side MOSFET or IGBT. Now a low side switch is one where the switch is below the load and a high side switch is one where the switch is above the load. The problem is that when we open a high side switch onto a load, the voltage on the load goes to the supply voltage. And to keep the switch open at this point, the voltage at the gate needs to be 5 to 20 volts above the supply voltage, which is a problem. Now, although there are several methods to deal with this, a common way is to use something called a bootstrap capacitor. If we take, for example, a common driver to drive high side MOSFETs, the IR2125, then the way the bootstrap capacitor works is that it is charged to the supply voltage of the driver via a diode, but it is referenced to the source of the MOSFET. Then when a small input pulse comes into the driver, the bootstrap capacitor can discharge through the driver into the gate of the MOSFET, turning it on. Note that the bootstrap capacitor must have a capacitance large enough to be able to supply the necessary current to charge the MOSFET gate capacitance. One more common chip I should mention is the IR2110. It's a dual driver, meaning it can drive both high and low side MOSFETs at the same time. When using this chip, you need to pay attention to the fact that it requires two input voltages. One would, is called VDD. That's the voltage or the same voltage as your input signal, which would typically be about five volts. And then it requires another source voltage, which is referred to as VCC. And that's the voltage which will be applied to the MOSFET gates. Each input voltage, both VDD and VCC, require their own uh, source capacitors which should be placed physically close to the chip and of course there is also the bootstrap capacitor which should also be placed close to the chip on the board and the whole chip itself obviously should be placed close or nearby to the MOSFETs. I will leave some links below on the drivers I mentioned. I hope you learned something from this video. If you'd like to help the channel you can do so using the links below. Thanks a lot. See you later.